going to make the motion. Pardon? Ready to go. Okay, we're, we'll go now to our next. So as promised, topic. we have the 2009, 2010 through 2013 and 14 capital budget, um, our CIP update um, from staff. Um, in the engineering department, we have our city engineer, Norm Hughes, and uh, management analyst, Sean O'Shea. So take it away, Norm. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and, and council members. This portion of the work session is devoted to introducing you to the city's capital improvement process, or CIP. Tonight we are here to set the context, describe its purpose, provide an overview of the process, describe the council approved project prioritization policy, review the CIP process and schedule, and answer any questions you have regarding the plan preparation process that will go between now and May. Tonight we're not going to go into any detail on actual projects. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> um, but uh, that will be reserved for our next meeting uh, where we're going to be talking about the CIP in January. Review a few basics about the CIP. The CIP is a five year plan that uh, programs expenditures for capital projects over five years but appropriates projects uh, for the first two years of the plan. So every two years we come back and test what we planned for the subsequent years and move the plan forward. Capital projects typically include new buildings, alterations to buildings, street improvements, street maintenance, park construction, major technology, and capital maintenance. The CIP com uh, combines project funding from many funding uh, sources into a matrix and compares that to revenue and produces a plan uh, to distribute the available of uh, funding from many sources to the different projects. The city has strong debt policies, uh, which we will describe in greater detail, that prevent over-dependence upon debt uh, to construct projects. This allows for flexible funding and extension timing uh, to, to be able to produce high-priority projects uh, to conform to the Council's vision. Sean O'Shea will uh, provide further details. I'll begin by talking about the process uh, for this cycle uh, of the CIP, kind of where we've, what we've been up to and uh, what we'll be doing in the future and how we'll, in, we'll be involving the council. Uh, the 2009-10 through 13-14 uh, CIP started in September with staff project submittals. Um, after that, uh, initial project cost estimating has just been completed. And the next step is a prioritization, a prioritization vote by senior staff, which will provide you with a high, medium, low project ranking um, for the, our recommendations, which you'll see when we come back to you in January. So at that meeting in January, we're going to present to you the capital projects proposed for funding for the cycle prioritized by staff. We'll also have updated revenue projections to help gauge that prioritization. At that time, we'll also be presenting a status update on existing CIP projects, as well as closing out completed CIP projects, which uh, may return unused capital funds back to their fund to be proposed for, or distributed to future projects. And then based on your comment then, we will refine project cost estimates revenue projections, and return in March for additional council review. 
and then we'll hold our first public hearing in May and then adopt the CIP in June. Uh, we have uh, the council adopted in 2003 a prioritization policy um, which really is the guideline by which staff submits projects and uh, you know just really provides criteria uh, for, for submitting for submitting projects the two main focuses are ma capital maintenance both safety and asset preservation and we can ask ourselves a few questions to know that it meets the criteria, such as, is the project necessary for the repair, replacement, and maintenance of the city's existing capital assets to protect health and safety? And similar, similarly for asset preservation, is that, pro does that, is that project necessary for the repair, replacement, and maintenance in order to preserve its asset life? The prioritization policy also talks about project viability and each, each project is evaluated on the basis of resources avail available to successfully build, maintain, and operate the project. And once again, when staff is submitting the project, we ask the questions, will the project generate operating or maintenance savings? And can other funds be secured for the project so that we can free up other city funds? So we look for outside sources. The city has a long-term capital debt policy which sets the parameters for issuing debt and provides guidance in the timing and structuring of long-term debt commitments. And the city typically uses debt financing only for one-time capital improvement projects and large equipment purchases and only under certain circumstances including conformance or when the project conforms with the general plan, if there's an emerging critical need or response to a mandate. When the pro or when the project's life cycle is equal to or exceeds the term of the financing. And debt financing is typically not considered appropriate for any recurring purposes such as current operating or maintenance expenditures. And as you see on the slide, uh, general fund supported debt service uh, will not exceed 7% of total general fund budget expenditures and transfers out. And the entire debt policy is included in the five-year CIP document and is affirmed through the CIP process. This next slide charts the history of general fund contributions for the last 10 fiscal years. The blue line or the uh, line, the lower line, uh, represents general fund 501 project spending and the pink line represents our capital debt spending. And we'll get into all of the fund types later, but this gives a snapshot look at our funding trends over the last 10 years. And as you, as you can see, the funding for the projects has varied over the years, and the factors include the economy and its effect on free month revenue streams, as well as the ever-changing city needs, priorities, and capacity. With the next few slides, uh, we'll be presenting our CIP fund groups. And we're going to do that because when we come back to you in January in order to present project prioritization, the projects are going to be grouped together according to fund source. So these next few slides will look at the different fund groups in a little better detail and explain how they're different and why they fund certain types of projects and particularly parks and RDA projects have their own process and prioritization process. So we'll get into that detail 